What's happening everybody? Boy Big Brando and let's talk about pricing. Now this is going to be either a very long video or I'll try to chop them up and section it off and make a few different videos out of this one. But when it comes to pricing, it gets really, really confusing. Now, a lot of people think that there's just one set rule that you need to live by when you do pricing or when you're creating shirts from home, but that's not the case. The easy, quick breakdown for this is if you own a vinyl cutter and you own a heat press and you're creating t-shirts from home, you have the ability to be three different people at one time. So I say that because if you have a heat press and a vinyl cutter, you could be doing stuff for your own personal brand. If you have a vinyl cutter and a heat press, you can be doing custom shirts. And if you have a vinyl cutter and a heat press, you can be mass producing stuff for other people. Now that might sound very, very confusing because you're like, man, everything's the same. I'm just making t-shirts. I'm cutting vinyl and printing t-shirts. That's cool, but that's not how it works. You have to remember that pricing is gonna be different for your own retail brand. Like your own personal brand, the retail price is gonna be, the price will be different if you were selling a custom t-shirt. And this is where a lot of people get confused because they're making custom t-shirts. They see my video where I'm talking about, you gotta triple your investment, but that idea is for pricing for your own brand. So if it costs you $5 to make that t-shirt, and this is just the general, general rule of thumb that I go by. This is how it works, is if the t-shirt costs me $5 to make, then I make sure I get my $5 back, I get another $5 to order another t-shirt with print on it, and then the other five goes back into the business or savings account, but that's just folded back into the business. So I make sure I triple my investment, right? So $5, I get paid back for the shirt, extra $5 to order another shirt, the other $5, goes into the bank account. That way I make sure that I'm making my money back. But this is how I price stuff for my own personal brand. So that's just something small that I kind of live by when it comes to my own branded stuff. You guys know that I run a few different brands. That's how the pricing works. I'll get a little bit more detailed a little later in the video or in a separate video. That rule doesn't apply to custom shirts. That rule doesn't apply to mass producing stuff. You have to remember that if you're mass producing, like printing for other people, two dozen, four dozen, 120 shirts, whatever you're doing, that pricing is gonna be way different than your own retail branded price and way different than a custom t-shirt. There's a lot of things that get involved. And then you have to remember who your competition is. And that's what I'm gonna break down in this video to give you guys some sort of guideline on how shit works. So remember, if you're printing like mass producing for somebody, let's say that you're doing two dozen, four dozen t-shirts, right? That right there, if you try to triple your investment on that, that price is gonna be so crazy, they're gonna be like, man, you're out of your mind, I'm just gonna go to this shop. So that's why it's easier for you to find out who your competition is in this space, and then you could undercut them by like a dollar or two, but at the same exact time, if it's not gonna be worth your time to do that job, it's okay to turn them down. So if you're operating like a print shop, that's where the mass producing stuff comes from, your competition is gonna be a print shop. Yelp search some screen print shops around your area, find out what they're charging. It doesn't hurt to hit them up for a quote on something. Right, so say your customer is gonna say, I want to get four dozen t shirts done, and I just want the front printed white ink on black t shirt. You send that same exact request to any print shop in your area and ask for a quote. All they're gonna do is email you back and say, Something like that's gonna cost this, setup is gonna be this, print's gonna be this, blank shirts is gonna be this. Now you have a baseline on what your competition charges, so all you have to do is either undercut them or not but that customer could either go to the print shop and pay that price or they could pay your price. Now you have some sort of level playing field. You know what I mean? So same goes if you're doing custom t-shirt, do the same exact thing. So say somebody wants one t-shirt, it's some kid's birthday and they want, you know, maybe their name and happy sixth birthday or whatever it is. That will be considered a custom one-off t-shirt. Your competition is gonna be the people at the swap meets with a heat press and a vinyl cutter, the people in those little kiosks in the middle of the mall with a heat press and a vinyl cutter, that's gonna be a competition. You just go there, find out what they're charging, boom. Now you have a reference to go off of and you could undercut them because if they're not going through you, they're gonna be going through that kiosk or the lady at the swap meet. So now you have your idea of what your competition charges and then what you can be charging. So why is the pricing gonna be different? Because now you're doing just a one-off t-shirt. 
You have a vinyl cutter, it's gonna take you X amount of time to cut that out, weed that out, press it on to a t-shirt. That's a one-off t-shirt, so you're gonna be charging for that one t-shirt. It's gonna be different than you charging for 12 shirts or 24 shirts or 48 shirts or whatever it is. That's where the pricing is gonna be different because a one-off t-shirt has a premium on it. And then on top of that, if you're doing mass producing four dozen shirts, there's no real premium. It's more so of your labor. See where the, the difference is? You're printing one shirt, you're printing 48 shirts. That's the price difference. So if you're charging $25 for that custom shirt and you're not gonna be charging 25 per shirt if somebody's ordering 48 of them, that doesn't make any sense because they're gonna be like, fuck, $25 for 48 shirts, that's robbery. I'm not gonna go through you, you're crazy. So remember, if you're doing custom shirts, pricing is gonna be different for those one-offs compared to if you were operating like a print shop and pressing for somebody else and you're doing, like I said, 48 t-shirts. Pricing is gonna be way different. So the pricing for 48 t-shirts could be anywhere from like six bucks to eight bucks per shirt. And then the custom shirts are gonna be like, I don't know, 18 to 25 dollars or something. You see how that's different? I'm gonna break all this down in a separate video though. I'm gonna break pricing, I'm gonna break how to calculate your stuff, all that stuff in a different video. Now that you have your custom pricing and then also operating like a print shop pricing, the last one is gonna be if you were operating your own clothing line, your own clothing brand, you're making your own t-shirts for your own brand. How do you price those out? That's where you would use my rule of thumb of tripling your investment, right? So say if your t-shirt costs $3 for a blank and then you're using you know $2 worth of vinyl or you're ordering transfers and let's say it was just around $2, make it easy five bucks in total for that one t-shirt. Triple your investment. Anything over that triple is gonna be cool. You don't have to charge $40 for that t-shirt. It's a blank t-shirt. You're using Bella Canvas or All Style like everybody else and you're printing on it like everybody else. There's nothing fancy about it. You don't have your own cut and sew program. You're just using a standard blank t-shirt and printing on it. There's nothing premium about the shit. So I'm not trying to knock anybody for doing that. But what I am saying is in my experience, if you're a new brand people, are very, very hesitant to take a risk on you. What are they getting for $45 for that one t-shirt? It's not no premium t-shirt, it's just a standard blank t-shirt. Be realistic when it comes to your pricing. If it only costs you $5 to make, anything over $15 is cool. You don't have to price gouge, you don't have to say, oh, I'm gonna sell it for 30 because I wanna make a lot of money. I personally do not get rich off of one transaction. My wealth comes from return customers. People coming back to shop with me because prices are fair, people coming back to shop with me because designs are cool. That's where I make my real money, is on return customer. I don't make it off of that one transaction off of the customer shopping with me one time. If the customer leaves and feels like they got ripped off for something, they're never gonna shop with you again. But if they shop with you and say, oh, you know what, pricing was fair, designs are cool, this right here is something that I could get behind, this is a brand that I can invest in, this is something I like to wear, now you want. You see what I'm saying? Pricing for your own personal brand. Who's your competition? Obviously, you're gonna think like Supreme and Bape and, and all these other high-end streetwear brands is your competition. Not necessarily. All you have to do is be within that fair price range. You go to the mall, you go to the stores, you see what t-shirts are priced at. Do you have to be at that price? No, you could undercut that by a little bit because you can afford to. You wanna focus on getting the customers and not necessarily just getting rich off of that one transaction. So if it costs you $5 to make, you could charge an easy 15, 18, $20, you win all day long. But also take into consideration poly mailers, labels, packaging and, and all that stuff, add that into your pricing cost too. So say if you went with $5 for the completed shirt and then added another dollar on top of that for the label, for the poly mailer, for maybe the neck label, that's an extra dollar. Now you're into the shirt for six, triple that, 18 bucks. You're good to go. All your bases are covered, your investments are covered, your re-up is covered, and then you have an extra $6 to bank away. That folds right back into the business. So when it comes to pricing for your own personal brand, what I like to do is I just go off of strictly tripling my investment. I'm gonna break it down into different categories. I'll break down the pricing on how that stuff works in a separate one. Maybe I'll try to get a whiteboard, but I wanna help you guys out as much as possible. So I wanna get a little bit more detailed without making this video too long, all right? A video from a while back, I asked you guys, do you guys do custom work? Do you print for other people? Do you run your own brand? A lot of people said they do all three. A lot of people said they do two out of three. Some people say they just do one. So that's why I wanted to make these videos about pricing 
practicing to help out everybody. But those are the three things that I use my equipment for. I print for other people, I do custom shirts, and then I also run my own brands. All right, catch you guys on next one, man. Yep. Yeah.